And welcome back to Jeff Kuenange Live here at Citizen Television. It's time for The Bench. And what an incredible young lady we have here today. She's 29 years old. She's Kenya's first ever female marine pilot. I was explaining to Michael Kenya earlier on, a marine pilot, incredible job. I'll let her tell you more about it. But this is a young lady who actually at one point wanted to study law, changed her mind. Instead, studied nautical technology. And the rest, as they say, is history. Elizabeth Marami is on the bench. Elizabeth, good to see you. Good to see I you. I should too, say Jeff. second officer. Yes. Elizabeth Marami. Yes. In, and in, in full, what's this uh, ceremonial gear? Yes, yes. I is this it? Yes, it is. Wow. Yes. How does it feel? Uh, Kenya's first ever female marine pilot. It comes with a lot of responsibility. So uh, I, I usually don't look at it that way. I just try and remind myself that I'm an ordinary person, ordinary Kenyan, until I'm faced with a challenge. Mm. Then I'm reminded that I'm, I pioneered and I really need to like, grab the bull by its horns and fight this challenge. And you're doing just yes. that. Yes. So for those of us who uh, are joining us late and don't know what a marine pilot does, please yes. explain. Uh, what a marine pilot does is that when uh, the ship gets into the Kenyan territorial waters or the port entry, uh, they are not, the foreign captains on board these ships are not allowed to navigate into the harbour because they're not aware of the safe boundaries to navigate in. So it is mandated by law that a Kenyan captain has to go out and board the vessel and navigate it safely into the harbour, dock it. Once cargo operations are done, they embark on the vessel, a Kenyan pilot, and then uh, they navigate it out, and once they're out of the waters and cleared in the open sea, they can let the, uh, the foreign captain So how many, how many miles out is that, m roughly, plus minus? Uh, that is, I, I'm not so sure, and I really don't want to, to say it. But is it far out at sea? It's is about it? an hour, per se. An yeah, hour. Yeah. So, so do you go on that tugboat thing? or It's a pilot boat. <laughs> It's a so pilot boat. Yes. And then you, you literally, you board the ship. Yes, while it's moving. <laughs> Please while don't. While the ship is moving. Don't say it, Jim. Here it comes. Here don't it comes. say it. Don't say it's it. It's like a matatu <laughs> at a stage. Yes. The driver jumps out. Shukana jump. <laughs> jump. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Are you serious? Yes. And then what is your job once you board? Once you board the ship, then you take command of the vessel because now you start, you're the one who's in charge of safely navigating it. Of course, people think that you're the one who's on the helm and navigating it, but actually there's a helmsman that has been tasked to do that. Mm -hmm. So what you do is just uh, give on orders. Uh, starboard 10, yeah, port 10. Just like you watched it on the last ship. Yes. Exactly the same uh, way. Do you watch the last ship? I love the last ship. I loved it. <laughs> My, so what, what in God's earth made you get into this profession? Uh, essentially, I, I got into the, or rather initially, I got into the profession when it, without knowing what it was about. Mm -hmm. What I knew was that I really wanted to be different. Like it was something that I felt deep in my bones yeah. from the time I was young. And I would always joke about it with my parents and say I want to be the first female president. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, I don't know, I just felt it. So yeah. when, when, this was, uh, when this opportunity came by and as I was going through the, the interviews to be awarded a scholarship, I, I, I knew then and then, as much as I don't know what this is, it sounds really exciting, but I was not going to gamble with my future. So I deferred my law degree that was actually an opportunity I had been waiting for for so long. Mm. I wanted to come to Nairobi and have the Nairobi experience. <laughs> and I had been called to the University of Nairobi to do uh, law. So I deferred the law degree. And then I started doing this uh, marine thing. And I've never looked back since then. Wow. Never, ever. Wow. Yes. And it's taken you literally around the world. Yes. Right? Yes. Is it fun? I mean, look, let's face it. The, you're the old, Kenya's first female marine pilot, right? Which yeah. means they're not that many, or they're very few. So you board a ship that's full of men. Yes. A lot of testosterone. Yes. And a tiny little woman boards, and she's guiding the ship. Yeah. How do they treat you? Uh, there are those that are very warm and welcoming, and they're, they're, they're impressed. 
And then there are those who are like, are you sure what you're doing? <laughs> no. Yes. But as I say, I have had tremendous support from the senior pilots at, at the port of Bombasa who have always been quick to remind me that you're here not because of your gender, but because of your brains. Mm. So just stand firm and do as you're supposed to do. Yeah. So, so when we're at Likoni, Yes. At the ferry trying to cross. Absolutely. And there's this huge ship coming yes. in. Yes. That's you, probably you guiding it in. Yes. Yeah? Yes. And you guided all the way to Kilindini? Yes. At the moment, I guided in under the supervision of a senior pilot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then you park it or whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> And you dock it. Dock it. Yes. And then when you, you, you're taking it out, did you take it out f forward, facing forward? Or it depends. It depends. On the space. It depends on the space. depends on the, how the waters are behaving on that day. It depends on very many, various, the various things that feed into how you're going to uh, navigate that ship yeah. that day. What if you see a ferry that's misbehavingly close to you? What do you do? You take action. And, and you, you have to assess the situation in good time to be able to take action so as to avoid any incident that could lead to a circumstance or an accident. Yeah. yeah. So, una pig a honey, Seriously? Yes. It's standard. Yes. Just to warn everybody. To warn, and because you're at a bend, that is usually a bend of, in the channel. So, yeah. you have to, have to sound one prolonged blast. So, how many times a day or a week? Let's say a day, would you be guiding these ships in? Uh, at the moment, I am off guiding ships because now I have gone back to do my sea experience to get a higher rank. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, that means uh, for every rise in rank, you need a considerable amount of time of sea time, like working on board ships. It's like how the airline pilots have its hours, yeah. but as we have it in months. So 18 months, you have to work 18 months at sea to be able to rise to the next rank. And, and, have, and you've been doing that? Yes, I have been at sea. I, just, I recently signed off a container ship that where I was on board for six months. Container ship? Yes, a container ship. From where? CMS CGM container ship. So starting yes. from where? My, my, at that point, my port of call was Marseille in uh, Marseille. France. Marseille. Marseille in France. Yeah. And I used to sail all the way to North Africa, the port in Algeria. Algiers. Uh, yes, Algiers. There, there was Algiers, Kigda, and uh, Mostaganem, and then sometimes we'll go down to Tunis or uh, out to Morocco, Tangem, and uh, Casablanca port, yeah, and back. And back to Marseille? Yes. And that's six months? Yes. Without coming home? Yes, Jeff. Come on. And it's all men in these ships? Yes, Jeff. And containers? Yes. <laughs> Do they have special... Um, compartments for you? What do they call them? Uh, uh, cabins. Cabins. Yes, I had a special cabin for me, a self-contained cabin you. for me. Yes. Is there Wi-Fi? Uh, on this ship, no, they didn't have Wi-Fi. You don't even have time to be on your phone, Jeff. What do you mean? You're out at sea for six months. But you know, um, the voyages I was doing were a bit short. They were more like 30 hours or, or more. And uh, when a voyage is short, you have a lot of work to do because before you even know it you've already docked in one port and you're already running cargo operations because what you're doing is you're just basically carrying cargo that is the purpose of the ship right so when you get to that port you're already um doing cargo operations and once they're done you're already sailing back so you're constantly busy when you have a short um voyage mm. and also there's so many things that you you have to do on board for me the fact that i'm looking towards going to a higher rank i take the time I have on board to learn the things I'm, I want to learn to help me because I have to sit for an international examination for me to be able to be uh, certified as yeah. a, a first officer. H have you ever lost any containers that, you know, just tip over and, you know, disappear? Mm, no, I'm, I'm lucky enough that it hasn't happened. And how me. are the waters in the Mediterranean? Are they choppy? Terrible. Are they? Yeah, it's unfortunate that most of my contracts have been during winter. <laughs> Oh yes, on board ships, but uh, I, I don't know. I feel like uh, it's, it's just uh, God's will that I have never been seasick. Yes, never. I've never been seasick, Jeff. Despite the choppy waters. Never, ever been seasick. And what's it like docking a container ship with like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of containers on it? Uh, okay, for, for somebody else, it will be... Uh, 
amazing and exciting. For me, it's just an everyday job. <laughs> Sexual harassment. Yes, it Jeff. must happen, Elizabeth. It must happen. Absolutely. Yes. It, it must. Uh, as I say, we are, we are the minority. We actually form one to two percent of the entire workforce. Mm. Yes. So we are so few, and it's rarely that I meet a fellow woman on board. So many a times we just there uh, with um, with men. Yeah, with men. And I'm sure, as beautiful as you are, they hit on you. Yes. Now, 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 Jeff, come on. I do not want to be scaring my parents. They won't let me go for my next contract. <laughs> I can handle it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah the, it, it does happen. It yes. does happen. But all I say is how you, you, you stand your ground. And, and I do not mince my words when it comes to that. It's, it's, it's a firm no. It's a work relationship that we have on this ship. Mm. And usually, um, I believe, you know, what I learned with men, they, they want to test the waters. It's like, okay, is she, she going to say yes? Okay. Is she going to say yes or no? Mm. And then after, when you say no, they're like, okay, fine. She's, they, they eventually perceive you as a colleague. And so they respect that? Yes, they respect that. Uh, so, yeah. So I've, I've, fairly, I've had my fair chance of, of goods and a little bit of bad experiences, but good. What was the worst? The worst experience I had on board the ship. I think my worst experience on board the ship would have been an altercation I once had with a captain. Ooh. Yes, and, and, and that for me was, um, was a real life experience of what I had been reading and I did not expect it. But I'm so glad the crew handled it so well with me and they were always there to protect me and, and I, I managed to, to sail through it perfectly. Where was he from? Uh, he was from Eastern Europe. If I say specifically who it, where he was from, they'll be able to pinpoint. And I'm not, it's not like I'm hiding his identity yes, or anything, yes. but it's, I don't like to dwell in the past. Sure, yes, sure. I went past it, I came out stronger, I came out better, and there's no need to dwell in my past. And it's never happened after that? Yes, it never happened after that. Wow. Yes. Best experience out there? I haven't had my best experience yet. However, I think I'm about to have my best experience. Mm -hmm. I'm about to join a cruise vessel. I'm shifting from container ship to cruise vessels. And, about, and I'm about to board a new ship in a shipyard to experience its final stages of building. And I'll be through the inaugural uh, stages of, uh, at Southampton in, the, in uh, integrating the, the ship to sail. And then through its maiden voyage, just like I saw you with uh, the... When you're flying to, uh, was it uh, JFK? Yeah. Yes, I will have the same experience with the ship. A cruise ship. A cruise ship, a, a large cruise ship. About 100, 167,000 gross tonnage carries about 5,000 passengers. Good Lord. 12 restaurants. It's amazing. So I feel that is going to be the best experience. Yeah. So. I will have. We used to watch a program growing up, growing up called The Love Boat. Do you remember that? No, Jeff, I, I don't remember The Love Boat. <laughs> maybe, maybe the pediatrician will remember. The Love Boat. Ask your dad. I will. The Love Boat. I will ask him. It was him. a cruise ship. Really? Yeah. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. And so where would this cruise ship be cruising? It will be, we'll go first to uh, Southampton, as of now, mm -hmm. to to have the entire celebration of lunch. It's a new ship, ship huh? Yes. And then, and then after that, we'll be... <coughs> to Europe, to South America? Yes. Or the, uh, we'll be doing the Europe route as a maiden <coughs> voyage, uh, Lisbon, um, down back to my home, my former home port, Marseille, south of France. Then we'll go to Barcelona, all the way to Italy. Yeah. Mombasa? No. Not this way? No. It's actually my first longest contract I've actually signed. How long? Nine months. Good Lord. Nine months yes, I'll be. without coming home. Yes. Are you the youngest in your family? No, I'm the second. Oh, in the middle, so nobody really paid much attention, <laughs> right? I'm not going to say that, Jeff. My parents mm. are watching. Mm. They love us equally. <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? No, I don't, Jeff. Uh, Team Mafisi has just called in, and they are just going crazy. <laughs> We're going to take a break, come back and talk some more. What's okay. it like? Because there's a lot of young ladies out there you're going to inspire tonight. Yes. And uh, they want to know, how does one get into this? Okay. And can one have a normal life? Yes. 
being doing what you do. Yes, yes, right? yes. Let's talk about that okay. after the break. Okay. Goodness gracious me. Second officer, Elizabeth Marami, in the house, 29 years old. And I tell you, she is making ways, literally, in this field. First ever Kenyan female marine pilot. By the way, we're going to take a break. Before we do that, Monica is informing me that there's been a horrible accident right here in the city. Uh, it's actually on Kenyatta, along Kenyatta Avenue near the Serena Hotel. So if you're, you're driving by that way or if you have people, then uh, avoid that area because there's a huge, huge accident on Kenyatta Avenue near the Serena Hotel. We'll give you more details when we come back. In the meantime, keep tweeting at Koinangajet, at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.